Hello there. Thank you for inviting me into your eardrums. I'm Sarah Wendell. This is episode number 539 of Smart Podcast Trashy Books. And it is time. It is time for the first of several year end episodes. I love doing these. This year, I have invited the staff reviewers and our podcast Patreon community to tell me their holiday wishes, a book that made their year better, and their big win for 2022. This week, Sue J.F. Hobbit, Maria Vale, and Lily Sona are sharing their picks. And of course, no one brings one book. So all of the links are in the show notes to all of the books. Never fear. Hello and thank you to our Patreon community. Thank you for making these episodes possible. I'm so excited to talk with so many of you. If you've supported the show, keep me going. Make sure every episode has a transcript. Plus, Patreon members get bonus episodes, a Discord server that is absolutely delightful, and you get to be, you know, part of shows like this. If you are curious, have a look at patreon.com slash smart bitches. Monthly pledges start at $1 a month. And a very big hello to Amanda, who is our newest Patreon community person. Welcome. This episode is brought to you in part by my favorite comfortable washable holiday shoes, Rothy's. If you have some holiday festivities coming up that you need to attend, or you're looking for the perfect stylish and sustainable gift for someone, may I suggest Rothy's? Rothy's shoes are perfect for holiday parties because they look dressed up, but they're incredibly comfortable and stylish. And they come in so many patterns and colors, including some with sparkle. You'll find the perfect match for your favorite party outfit. And as for gifting, well, they're they're perfect. They feel great out of the box because they are woven. So they stretch to fit. And I do suggest, though, order a size up if you're getting the points. Rothy's are made out of recycled plastic, so they're durable, sustainably made. And best of all, they're machine washable. I know you've heard me talk about this. It is still my favorite thing. Chuck them in the washing machine. They come out looking like new. And heads up, if you're giving yourself a fabulous gift this year, Rothy's just released Merino Wool slippers, you know, for when your day is actually over. Get stylish shoes, versatile and durable enough to wear all the time with Rothy's. Get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash Sarah. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash Sarah. This episode is brought to you in part by Stamps.com. Yep, I still get excited saying that. It is time for holiday mailing and shipping and sending cards and sending gifts to people all over the place. And it's not too late to get your holiday mailing and shipping needs under control completely with Stamps.com. Stamps.com has everything you need to make your holiday season a lot easier. It's a 24-7 post office you can access from anywhere. No lines, no traffic. No hassle. Know that one guy who's always mad that they're in the post office line? Like it's a post office. There's a line. Calm down. With Stamps.com, you skip all of that. I get exclusive discounts, terrific rates on shipping, and I don't have to wait in the line with that person. Stamps.com lets me print official postage right from my computer and saves me money. I used to have a specialty printer and I had to buy special labels for it. Not the case here. Stamps.com, I use my regular printer. No special supplies needed. It's fast. It's easy. It's streamlined. Shipping is never stressful. This holiday season, trade late nights for silent nights and get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code Sarah for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code Sarah. If you are ready to hear holiday wishes and just good vibes and a big, warm, fuzzy podcast, let's do it right now. On with the show. My name is Sue. I am coming to you from the greater Los Angeles area, and I have been reading SBTV since 2005. Wow, that's when it was founded. That was the original year, yeah. When you and Candy met, because someone was looking for cat food or dog food. That was right. Yep. Sensitive pet. Wow. Yeah. So you're like a long time. You've seen all the redesigns and everything. I Yeah. I, OG. Um. Thank you for <laughs> being part of this Smart Bitches community. I'm like really I'm like, honored. Thanks. I'm like, I remember when the ladies were only like three and she had to make a whole new lady. I did. And it was really difficult because of the style. And I read the whole thing and I was like, that's a lot of effort. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I still look for images. Like if I'm on a stock image site, I'll do a couple of keyword searches to see if there are any images that I could then can like have my my um, design team at Wax Creative, if they could take that and like change the style into... To the, a lady the and it is a, it is a lot of work and it's a very specific style back then you still had your day job right like this mm-hmm. was oh yeah 
Oh yeah, this was this was something I did like on the sly on my lunch break. Oh yeah, this didn't become my full time job until 2010, so five years after the site was founded. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Well, congrats. Thank you. I'm still in awe that this is my job. But it is the best part of my job because I get to like, you know, hang out and talk to people like you. Hi. (laughs) So what are your holiday wishes for everyone? Let's start with the happy stuff. Oh, okay. So my holiday wishes. I thought about this. Uh, My holiday wishes are that we all get to enjoy ourselves in whatever capacity that means. Yes. So, Like if it means going to see your family and that, you know, contentious uncle and like having a screaming fight and you enjoy that because some people do then go for it right Mm -hmm. but if you don't want to fly for thanksgiving you just want to stay home with your partner and pets or by yourself like i hope that happens for you too i hope you get to do the thing you want to do absolutely i agree with you and that and that people are able to accept without judgment the things that make them happy yes and like don't should all over yourself yeah like you should be traveling for Thanksgiving. Y'all, it sucks. No, traveling is the worst. Don't, yeah, and maybe you don't really care for Thanksgiving. Then don't. That's fine. And um, maybe you don't like turkey. Then don't make a turkey just because everyone says you have to. Like, I feel like the pandemic really changed in terms of like, my give a fuck. I just don't anymore. Oh, yes. And now just because we're back or whatever, like, doesn't mean I have to like perform whatever it is that we're supposed to. Now, I will say actually myself, I used to be a very anti-holiday humbuggy kind of person. Mm-hmm. And I have bought a lot of lawn ornaments. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I want to, right? So it's funny. It's like, I was like, no, I'm actually really looking forward to this. Because in some ways, because I get to choose to, yeah, I really want to, as opposed to before where I was like, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I had like maybe 10 trick-or-treaters this year. I was the most amped person on my block. Like I was so excited. Aww. I like did the thing for you. I asked like, what are you? Like uh, one guy dressed as a one of those traffic cones and he's like, I'm not going to get hit. I'm really safe. And I was like, you get double candy. Yo, um, yes. <laughs> but I was like that, like I was that neighbor. Mm-hmm. But that's also sort of you being yourself in your home and having your home represent how you feel you're in, in yeah. your interior, your exterior of your home is representing how you feel inside about Halloween this year. And that's awesome. Yeah. And it's festive AF this year. Heck yeah. So. so what was a book that made you happy this year? It does not have to be a 2022 book, but bonus points if it is. Going for the triple word score. I looked I looked up my reading log because my friends and I do a reading log. Um, and the book not published it this year, but that did make me extremely happy was um the bodyguard she works for a security company and he's like a movie star or whatever and it was extremely fun and she was very competent which is why i liked it and then another book that you guys recommended that i have meant to be reading forever but didn't was i finally started the first murder bot (gasps) and i loved it so is this the bodyguard by Catherine center Catherine Center. Yes. Yellow, ye- mustard yellow cover. Yes, mustard yellow cover. I was going to say, you know, with the two figurines on it, <clears throat> doesn't help. Yeah, the, the two illustrated people, that also doesn't help. The two people illustrated standing back to back, not touching, still not helping. Yeah. Sometimes one's above, one's below, still not Nope, help. still not helping. It's like when we get a Habo request and someone's like, okay, so this was a historical and there was a ball. And I'm like, I keep, sorry, I cannot help you. <laughs> She wore a gown and like something, something on her gown snapped. Yep. Uh, yes. This is an uh, an illustrated cover with two people standing back to back, not touching. But this that is the bodyguard by Catherine history. Center. Got it. Yes. Awesome. So she that was amazing. It was nice to see sort of a competent woman doing physical security Ooh. and how much of it was mental and not just like physically overpowering people and killers of a certain age. Oh gosh. It's, I just so inhaled that book. It was awesome. Yes. And then Murderbot, which I, I love the Murderbot itself. The bot that murders, but choose, could murder, but chooses to watch soap operas. Been there. But the other thing I liked was, I don't remember the, the, t- the captain of the exploratory team, the PhD scientist. She was awesome. And the way that the Murderbot recognized competence. Yes. Mensa. Dr. Like, Mensa. Dr. Mensa and was like, I like Dr. Mensa. And I was like, I like Dr. Mensa too. Yeah. Um, 
So I haven't done the rest of the books because I uh, am trying to savor them. Oh, yes. Um, but I I plan to continue reading the Murder Bum ones. So what was a big win for you this year? Um, a big win for me was that, this is going to sound crazy, but I DNF'd a lot of books. I used to never DNF them. Like I would read them while yelling, just like <laughs> mad the whole time. Right. And like, reading this like while I'm angry reading. and like texting my friends how much I hate this book. <laughs> Not like in an F plus way. Like I love an F plus, right? Like an F plus is like aces. This was like, she's stupid, he's stupid. I hope they all die. Like I hate this book. Right. And I would throw this book if it weren't actually on my e reader and belonged to me and would only hurt me. Like I really, I've had ones where I just like, I would like, I will like physically put it down and have to take a take a lap in the room. I'm so mad. And then I used to read them all. And then worse, and the reason I wouldn't read fantasy or sci-fi or paranormal is like, I was like, no, it's in a series. I have to finish the series. Like there was this thing where I was like, so I just wouldn't start series, right? And I would tell all my friends, like, I don't care how good it is. Like, I don't want to read it. I'll I'll have to read it forever. Like me and Outlander. Like, <laughs> right, right around book six, I was like, this is the worst. But did I buy it? Yes. Did I read it? Most of it. I don't remember a lot of it, but I was like, I will read it. It was just like, and like, who's keeping score? Who cares? Yes. And, and like, I felt like DNFing stuff or like quitting series was like a, 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 a reflection of me. Yeah. Like I didn't have intuitiveness. Like I like don't, you know, like whatever. It's some and sort then, of moral failing if you don't yeah, finish this like, book you started. Right. Yeah. yeah I, or like, I don't, you know, I don't have book mojo or like I'm in a reading slump. And then I was like, you know what? It's not my job to write a book that is compelling, right? And like, I'm not, obviously I'm not going to like go tell the author, like I hated your book. Like I'm not going to do that. But at the same time, it's my private decision to be like, this book sucks. I'm putting it down and I never have to see it again. Yep. And that goes back to what you were saying about the pandemic and decorating your house, that you are going to be yourself unapologetically and you're going to set your own reading boundaries according to what you want to do. And there's no should or imperative at all. Yeah. And like, who cares? Right. Who cares? So, no one's like, keeping um, score. Yeah. I've DNF books, like two chapters and I'm like, you know what? It might get better, but I don't care enough to try. Yep. And I, um, I love that idea that no one's keeping score. No one's keeping track of what books you finish. And there's no like, there's no tally or receipt at the end. Like, I'm sorry, you have, you have left too many books unread. You're going to the bad place. You're, what? you're, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going to the bad place regardless. That's fine. That's fine. But- but also like I feel like the tracker actually really helped me because I used to be like oh I didn't read that many books this year and then when I was like if you if I'm allowed allowed who's allowing whatever if I log dnf books I I try a lot of books oh yeah me too a lot of books in a lot of different genres and like it's not like I'm trying and like if I hit a book slump so if I look at my tracker I hit a book slump February through May I just couldn't really I, I, I read one book mm-hmm. but I was like I DNF'd a couple in the middle and I was like no this is just not hitting and when it hits is, is when it'll hit and we'll see what it takes um the one it took was apparently a 800 page historical fiction novel as you do like you do I was like who knew who knew a which tome. book was that it was I think it might be 700 and something pages it was uh Allison Weir does historical historical fiction She's a historian herself, but she mm-hmm. also writes fiction. And so she wrote an Anne Boleyn novel that I was like, I'm in a slump. This looks good. Yeah. I also find that tracking when I haven't finished a book is also a good indicator of maybe there's something going on like in my brain that I need to be aware of. Like, oh, OK, something's going up. Let's. So for recently, I was having a really hard time in like late October, early November, um, finishing books. And I switched to audiobooks. And it worked so well for my brain. Once I found two series that I liked and I could switch back and forth, I was I was getting that that good book feeling like, oh, yeah. I'm not here right now. I'm in this book and it's very restorative and soothing for my brain. But also DNFing a book gives you more time to find the ones that do hit and that do work. So you're actually doing the right thing for your brain by making sure that what you're enjoying, you, you have more time for what you're enjoying. I, I will say I do sometimes miss like the rage text I used to send to my friend. Because like that was actually legitimately hilarious. Yeah. I'd be like, and my friends would be like, why are you reading this? And I'm like, so that I can yell about it. P- keep up. It just gives me a lot more time. And also I want to say that 
this wasn't this year. So, but it was a win in years past. Mm -hmm. And I want to say you guys and one of my friends who was like, reading is just hard for me. You guys were like, audiobooks count as books. And I was like, oh, it does count as books. Absolutely. It does. Fanfic counts. Audiobooks count. Anything. If it's a narrative and you're enjoying it, it counts. And it helps so much because like, I do a lot of like kitchen cleaning or folding laundry while I'm listening to audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, I don't sit there reading and be like, oh, I should be doing something else. Or like, I have a lot to do today, and but I'm really enjoying this. And I feel this like push and pull. And then it's like, I can enjoy all the things I want to do. Oh, yeah. And then also there are some books that honestly, um, Bad Blood, that Theranos nonfiction, mm-hmm. I fell asleep like three times trying to read it. I just like, I couldn't get through it. But in the <laughs> audiobook, it was so good. <laughs> and so it's just like, the, it just depends on the medium sometimes. Absolutely. Like, what, what your brain can 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 read and can't read versus can hear or not hear. Like I really have a hard time with fiction and romance as audiobooks, but I have no problem speeding through it as a written. And then it's the exact opposite for some nonfiction. I just I can't read nonfiction. It's too it's too dry for me. But somehow with a narrator, it's like someone's telling me an intensely true gossip story. Oh, I love that. And I love listening to audiobooks or listening to things while I'm doing chores. I think of it as dressing up my chores. Like this chore is not fun and I don't enjoy it, but, but I can put on an audiobook. It very much soothes a part of my brain that craves constant narrative distraction. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sue. Thank you. Happy New Year. And thank you for being part of the podcast and the podcast Patreon. It's really, really lovely to chat with you each day. Thanks for doing this for so long. Every year at the end of the year, it's almost time for me to like finish the business taxes and file all, like I have to file an annual report. I have to do all this business stuff. Every year there's a moment where I'm like, still here. Hell yeah. We're all still here. And like you said, no one is keeping score. No one is keeping score. It's one of the best parts of my day when I'm like, what's the digest got for me today? Yep. Thank you. And then I like, oh, I forgot to tell you this. Mm -hmm. uh, Last week I bought those loop earplugs. Oh, how do you like them? I like them. And I bought the like dangly Me ear, too. ear. And then yesterday we got Taylor Swift tickets. <gasps> and I was like, Oh my goodness. That is a big win. Congratulations. I and I said, thank you. And I was like, I texted my friend. I was like, I'm so excited. Can't wait to bring the earplugs. Right. Because I can't go to conf- concerts because of my ears ring for a week and a half afterward. It's ear damage. Like this is, I don't, people are like, why are you? And I'm like, here's the deal. Even if I didn't think that it was too loud, I know I'm getting ear damage. So yep. I'm like, like nerve damage. So I was like, yep. the amount of sunblock I wear says that I should pay that same, same amount of attention to my ears. But it was like the most 40 year old thing to text my friend. I, was like, I brought my earplug it? earrings. I don't really cool earplugs for them. And they look good too. They're really cool looking. I love how they look. They're really cool and they dampen and they don't, my problem with like regular, which I was wearing them for a while was like regular earplugs. It muffles things Mm -hmm. to the point where like you feel like you're underwater or something like it's hard. It's not as nice. Yeah. It serves a purpose, but also detracts from the experience. Yeah. So. And this just dampens all of the extra and makes it so you can, like, I can hear people, I can hear what's happening, but also I don't, I don't hear like the laptop fan that bugs me and, and loud noises are turned down. It's so great. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Hey, everyone. This is Maria Vale from New York City. Um, Thanks for letting me join in. I read a lot of books in 2022, uh, but some of my favorites, there were actually a couple that I wanted to mention. One was Nettle and Bone. I love T. Kingfisher fantasies, no matter what, but I read this one, you know, it's another upended fairy tale right after the Dobbs decision. And it was a story about choice and autonomy that at the moment I really needed. Um, And then the other one that I wanted to mention was Sailor's Delight, which has all the research that I admire about Rose Lerner's books. I don't know if anybody else loves Regency Romance and the Patrick O'Brien Aubrey Maturin series, but if you do, this is really for you. Um, Her hero, Elie Benizé, is a gay Jewish naval agent in love with his client, Augustus Brine, and I can't imagine a better 
name for a naval hero. Um, she does such a wonderful job with Ellie's repressed pining, and I really don't remember the last time I rooted so hard for a character to find love. As for myself, I published the last two volumes, well, volume and a half, of my Legend of All Wolves, a series I started when I was 57. I'm proud of those books and sorry to see the end of the Great North Pack. But I'm going to be busy this spring. Um, I was asked to participate in a collection of fey stories that includes some of my absolute favorite fantasy romance writers, Jeffy Kennedy, Grace Draven, and Dana Martin, that will be coming out this spring in time for a polycon. And just a few weeks earlier, I'll be releasing a love story between the angel of death and a waitress at a thinly disguised Hooters. So two very different stories. Um, in terms of my wishes for 2023, I'm hoping that we will all be gentle with the world and the world will be gentle with us too. So love to you all. Well, my online persona is JF Hobbit or Hobbit for short. And uh, I work in education, so I keep that online. I completely understand. And um, I have been reading romance since college, but uh, out loud since, like, mostly COVID, when I just decided I gave fewer fucks about what people thought about what I was reading. Um, and since then, have moved to reading almost entirely romance, since I decided, ooh, I can count this on my Goodreads. And hey, I like reading this a lot more than I like reading the like literary books. Yep. So yes, uh, since then I've done a lot of catching up on backlists and stuff. So what yeah. are your what are your holiday wishes for everyone? Uh, holiday wishes. So peace. I was peaceful family gatherings. Oh yes. Whether that be with found family or blood family or family that you are just meeting and getting to spend time with yep. as I raise my hand. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah. Peaceful, peaceful family gatherings and some quiet time. If that is a thing that you desperately need around the holidays. Oh yes. This is a good wish. Especially mm -hmm. when you find yourself in community with people who tend to make you feel safe being yourself. That's, that's a yes. really lovely form of peace. I agree. So what was a book that made you very happy this year? I came up with a short list okay. of just ones this that were published in 2022. Fantastic. I kind of used that to limit myself a little bit since I read a lot of backlists this year. Um, so I was going to start with Alexis Hall. Anything Alexis Hall writes, I will eat up, but I particularly loved A Lady for the Duke, the... Oh trans regency romance it's like all of the words that i like in one in one book oh, and it was amazing it was so good i loved it so much um and then i also read and loved love on the brain ali hazelwood yeah gotta love some stem some stem representation there uh nobody's princess which i know like i loved hearing erica ridley on the podcast and the book was spectacular. Oh, that's and so I great. All of the, I loved all, I love all the Wild Winchester books. They're just like, romps. They're and just I, fun, right? Yes. And then um, for the monster lovers, I, uh, both a Finley Fens orc romances that were published this year. Um, actually, she published three, but they were all spectacular. Uh, and the governess in the orc, the most recent one, one for having my like number one fantasy, which is a well-funded school. <laughs> uh, listen, if you're going to have monster fucking and you're going to have orcs, why not a well-supported educational system, right? Let's Honestly, just go all the way. Like, 
like there was cooperation and there was respect for other people's cultures and it was just it was like this is the perfect school why does the perfect school exist in orc mountain and not in the world i don't know an honorable mention for all of the side changeling books because like at least one of them was published this year oh. one of the ones i read it, it- Last year at this time, I started a reread of that whole series all the way. I think that took me into mid-February. It was great. I would listen to them all on audiobook. Oh, they're so good on Uh, audio. Yeah. And I was, I like just kind of like, I have that one friend that I text about all the books that I read. And I was like, she's like, do I need to just read these so I know what you're talking about? And I was like, yes, because I can't be the only one reading all 30 of these in one three month span. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so those were my top hits. That is fantastic. The nearly 200, according to Goodreads, that I have tracked reading in Goodreads. Nice um, number. You must be very pleased with that. I am very pleased with that. It helps that I have a long commute and audiobooks. Oh yeah. Oh, I I've gotten very much into audiobooks actually. I'm um, mm-hmm. my I'll give you a sneak peek. This week's bonus episode is going to be yes. all of the things that I do to combat when I have too too much brain fatigue to read, but I need to read mm-hmm. and audiobooks are a major component of that. A, a huge part of that cuz I don't love silence. No. As much as I like quiet, I don't love silence. Um, and sometimes my brain will choose to fill that silence with things that I don't want to think about. It's like so not cool. Yeah. <laughs> and my go to for years was music. But then I like there are just sometimes that music doesn't scratch the reading itch. Yes. And so I was like, well, what can I do? Well, what else can I do while I play stupid games on my phone? Right. And color color by number. Um and the answer was audiobooks. And I was like, why have I never thought of this before? So I've thought for years that I couldn't do audiobooks because I have ADHD and just like sitting and listening to something without doing anything with my hands is hell. Yeah. Um, but once I was like, oh, but like if I do something with my hands, like doodling in class, then I can focus to what the professor is saying on what the yes. professor is saying. So what if that worked with? doing something with my hands and audiobooks. Yes. And I'll be even more interested because I actually care about what the audiobooks are saying. Yes, absolutely. That is the exact same thing that is true for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So So that was a revelation. It's amazing, right? So other than that, what's Mm -hmm. a win for you in 2022? Oh, gosh. Uh, In 2022, I'd say I have been trying for as long as I have been dating and then married to my spouse to learn German because they are German Ah. and we are planning on moving to Germany in the nearest future. Um, That'll be a very different culture than what you're used to. It will be a very different culture than what I'm used to. I am born and bred Californian. Oh, extremely different then. Wow. So it will be, it will be a, it'll be a shift. So I've put a lot of time into kind of pre- preparing myself yeah for cultural and also for the language and so like after four years of doing duolingo and being like i still can barely say a sentence that they don't say to me first right i have actually like i went out and found like grammar stuff Ooh. and have been able to have like very basic conversations that's fantastic like whole conversations with spouse and with their siblings who also speak German and grew up in at least partially in Germany oh that is fantastic congratulations it's a little bit and they still laugh at my pronunciation because American R's man oh yeah the R is in a totally different part of your mouth it's just it's so far back and I'm like but then I can't breathe (laughs) yep Thank you yes. so much for doing this. It's been really delightful to talk to you. I'm honored to have been part of your quiet, chill moment. Yes. Thank you so much. I have been listening and loving your podcast since like 2020 when I decided that I liked romance enough to 
not care what people thought about yeah. it. Yeah, screw all the screw people who have opinions about your reading. It's your reading. Doesn't matter. Exactly. I'm I'm honored to have you on the show this year as we celebrate yeah. the end of the year. Thank you so much. Thank you. So my name is Lilisana. That is the name that I go by on the interwebs. Um, I am in Georgia, so we are in the middle of having our runoff election, which is super exciting. Um, it's only a little yeah. nerve wracking. Only just a little bit. We've done this before. It went okay. We'll try to do it again. It's um, exhausting. It is exhausting. Um, I have already voted, so I'm done. Yay. How long did you have to wait in line? Did you have to wait in one of those lines that was I, nine blocks long? It was not nine blocks long, but it was an hour and a half. Great day in the morning. Right. Um, so that's so called voter heard. suppression. Mm -hmm. wow. um, we had two people who had never voted before. Oh, how exciting. Um, yes. So we got to applaud and, call, and clap and tell them yay. So that was lovely. Um, they seemed very excited. So that was cool. To see oh, people cool. vote for the same first time is just like, feels yes. really nice, right? Does. So, so we all applauded and it was, it was lovely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So that's where I am. Um, I, I do computer work. I'm a manager for Cisco. Um, and so, yeah, that's me. Well, thank you for doing this. It is so nice to have all of these different people and voices on the podcast to talk about the end of the year. So let's start. What are your holiday wishes for everyone? I hope everyone gets a break. Oh, God, yes. Cheers to that. <laughs> like, I don't know why 2022 has felt so heavy. Right? Heavy is like, exactly the right word. It's just been heavy. And, you know, we had, we had the, the peak pandemic years where we were all locked down and we came out of it kind of maybe sort of all of those things. And 2022 just hit everyone like a brick. So I hope everyone gets a break and we can all sort of take a deep breath, look at back at where we've been, yeah. the progress that we've made, because we have made progress, and just have a break. That's just what, rest. That's my holiday wish. Yes. Yeah, that's a that's a good wish. That is get a good wish. Breath. Take a nap. Oh gosh. So what was a book that made you happy this year? Um, I have, it has to be, it's a trilogy. So it's the Scholomance Man series. Oh, uh, and listen, everyone I have asked this to has brought more than one. So if you oh, keep good. going, so don't, more than one. Don't, don't feel the pressure that you can't bring more than one. Excellent. Um, so I read the part of the first one when, when Scholomance first came out, I don't even remember the name of the first book. Um, I read part of it and I got about two thirds of the way through and I went, oh, I just can't. It, it, it ends on a cliffhanger. It doesn't complete. I just, I can't read this book. Um, I love Naomi's work. It's great. I love all of her stuff. Spinning Silver is just, it is my heart book and I read it almost every year. I love it so much. Um, I think I read it five times during lockdown. Um, and I was like, I, I trust her. I trust that this is going to work out, but I just, I can't. Too much stress. I cannot do it. Yep. Um, so I put them on the shelf and I pre-ordered both of the, the others. Um, and then the last one came out and I was like, okay, it's out. It's complete. I can do it. So I went back to the very first one and I read all of them in like four days. Oh my gosh. That's um, a lot. It was a lot. Um, but it was so good and just, it was exactly what I needed to hear at the time. Um, it was all the right words in the right place. And it was just fantastic. Isn't it uh, lovely when it is the exact right, like flavor, like, oh, this yes. is exactly what I wanted. Precisely what I needed. Yep. Uh, and it was just, it was happy and good and had a huge conversation about a whole lot of things that I was also having conversations with in other places. So it was just, it was the right book at the right time with all the right words. And it was fantastic. That's lovely. That is really lovely. And the nice uh, thing is because the trilogy is complete, you can reread it. Yes. Yes. 
so it's done. I can go back. I can reread it, which I have. Yep. Um, I've reread it at least once in sections, at least two or three times because I read sections. Two honorable mentions that I have to to do. Um, Ursula Vernon's Nettle and Bone, which is just, it's delightful. Um, it was a happy fairy, not happy. She doesn't write happy. She writes weird and twisted, but comforting, weird, twisted and comforting all at the same time. Yeah. Um, so that one was great. Um, and then a nonfiction that I read, which is Unmasking Alice. Oh, is this the one about Go Ask yeah. Alice that was like this whole thing was a big fat lie? Yes. <gasps> I have heard about this book. Tell me about it. It is good. So I read Go Ask Alice as a kid. I absolutely did. We are probably of an age because that yeah. was the book. Mm-hmm. Like that book was everywhere. Everywhere. Um, I read it when at an age where like half of it went over my head. Um, like I got some of it, but much of it was just like, what? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And so it's all a lie. Um, it's all made up. And it like the woman who wrote it apparently wrote like four or five other books that are exactly like it. Yep. They just didn't get popular. Um, and just reading it was this weird experience of like, oh, I remember that passage. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. No, that traumatized me. Yep. Um, you know, and looking at it from an adult perspective when I'm not like 12 or whatever. Right. Age yeah. Was, you're like, yeah, no, that's, that's bullshit. That's entirely nonsense. But at 12, if you're reading it in a book and you're told that it's a true story, why would yeah. you doubt it? Because at yeah, that age, it's like, oh, well, it was true. And it was in print. Surely it yeah. wouldn't be words on the paper in a book if it wasn't, you know, true. Not nonfiction books don't lie to you when you're 12. <laughs> no, not at <laughs> all. <laughs> Which is a whole other thing that we should start unpacking because to- tech things yeah just a little bit Um, but yeah so it was it was a fabulous read Um, did it make you really mad because I have a feeling if I read this book I'm gonna want I'm gonna be so mad at this author for traumatizing me and so many other people it didn't it made me more sad than mad yeah um, that there was definitely an element of like how really did you really have to do this yeah but there is a lot of like, there's some tragedy in there that they hit with you at the like the last third of the book. And you're like, oh, shit. Oh, no. Like, but it was it was satisfying from my perspective because it was just I remember all of the emotions and all of the things that came up from from the original book and having it debunked was this sort of demystifying it and I could go oh yeah like all of that could just go away mm-hmm. I just sort of tossed a whole bunch of garbage into the trash that I didn't even realize I'd accumulated isn't so. that lovely when you read something yeah. that reframes an experience for you and you're like oh I can let go of this old way of seeing things I don't have to think through this frame anymore yes this frame is no longer valid it doesn't work it never worked and now I can see that it doesn't work and I can just pitch it yeah uh, so that was great. Oh, that's good. I might have to read this. I, yeah. I kind of yeah. love the subtitle, LSD, Satanic Panic, and the Imposter Behind the World's Most Notorious Diaries. Yeah, it's going to cover some stuff. There's going to be some, it's it's gonna be some shit in there. Yeah. Oh, yep. damn. Wow. Okay, thank you. I have to get that. What was a win for you in 2022? I mean, I survived. That I mean, was- yes. <laughs> <laughs> The real win is my daughter is in her senior year of high school. Oh, Uh, yes. We have gotten her to her senior year. She's gotten the first set of her college applications. Um, So she, she has picked a college that she really wants. She's picked backups that she really wants. Um, And like, I wasn't that parent. Like that's my win. I get Uh, it. You know, we we had a lot of conversations about, you know, what do you want? What does it look like? All of those things. And I didn't at any point say, well, you need to go to this school or you need to apply to this school. Um, 
And I think we, me and my husband and my daughter all sort of navigated that fairly tricky part. Very tricky. Yeah. Senior year and just high school in general without blowing up. I am also in that boat. My older son is a senior. Mm -hmm. Early action uh, applications are due on the 1st of December and he's applying to music school. So he has to do pre-screening auditions and then a second audition in January, February sometime. Just finishing the recordings of his pre-screenings for all the schools he's applying to was such a relief for him. He was like, oh gosh, I'm done with that part. I can handle the audition. That's in front of people recording himself. Not a, yeah. not a fan. But you're so right that getting through the process, it's tricky. It's so much different than when we applied to college. Mm-hmm. So much mm-hmm. different. And college is something different now than it yes. was when we were younger. Mm-hmm. The loans yeah. that I took out were not the same as the loans that are taken out now. Well, and like I, it helps that I went to my first pick school um, it turned out that that did not work out for me. Yeah. Um, so I dropped out, was kicked out, whatever, like sort of a combination of both um, and sort of figured out what I was doing for a while and then went to a local state university, which I paid for by working a job that covered tuition. Um, and you know what? I'm doing fine. Oh, yeah. This is, this is not the end all be all decision of your life. And I keep, I keep telling my, my son that there's more than one right school. There's not just one college that is the one right school. There are lots and lots of places and there's not one choice. And it's also, if you, if you go and you're like, this isn't for me. Okay. Well then if your goal was to get into that school, you got in, it's not for you. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not a forever choice. No, there are. That's the thing. I feel like there's a lot of pressure, especially on young people, that you must choose and you must stand by that choice. And if you change your mind, it is wrong. Like, no, that's not true. No, it's not. I do feel like my daughter's school has done a really good job of emphasizing that it's not there is one perfect college. Yeah. It is you need to find the college that matches with you. Yes. Do you want to go to a giant place or do you want to go to a small place or like, do you want to go where it's cold? Do you want to never see snow again? Like, what are the things that you, what do you like and what is important to you? And there's probably, you know, there's probably 50 schools out there that are your perfect school. And uh, I remember we went up, did a tour and one of the colleges we looked at, she opened the car door, stepped foot on it and said, no. Wow. The vibes are wrong and I don't like it. And I was like, okay. Okay. Like we, we have to eliminate colleges somehow. But what a credit to you that she would trust her instinct and intuition yes. enough to say, yeah, this is not my place and then talk to you about it. And I, I appreciate that. So, so yeah, we have navigated this, put in her applications. I don't know if you've done the Common App thing. Oh my and, gosh. And- I, yeah. I have spent so much time with Common App and the submit button. The fact that it gives you fireworks. Yes. Like submit. It's so good. (laughs) We we had a sign that was already made up to say like, yay, child. Um, And so we stood there and we waved the sign as she clicked her first submit. Yay. That's so so great. Uh, I I kept telling my son, you don't know how lucky you have it. I had to write my name and my address and all. Mm -hmm. I had to write this by hand. I couldn't even type it. I had to fill it out. And it was like a booklet. Like you had to fill in. Oh, it was awful. Oh, like you don't know how lucky you have it. This is fabulous. <laughs> and none of the none of the questions were the same for any of the places that no, I No, not at all. None of them were the same. And some of them were very, very specific to that school where you had to do research yeah. to answer them. Oh, yeah. Congratulations Absolutely. to all of you. You navigated a really hard process. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that's my win. Yay! Big win. <laughs> I am a software engineer and a manager by trade and profession. And they always tell you that you should never do anything. Maybe six months. Like, maybe you can do something six months out. You can plan for that and make a plan and it's fine. And when we had our daughter, I was like, you are telling me that I have to spend 18 plus years doing this thing and I get no idea of how it's going to turn out. That is, yes. This is mm-hmm. terrible. 
Yes. <laughs> Where's my feedback loop? What's going on? I constantly tell my kids like, okay, until right now, I have never had a 17-year-old and a 15-year-old who are you at your exact ages right now. I mean, I know you think I know what I'm doing. I am often flying by the seat of my pants and I'm going to screw up, but I've never done this moment. I've never lived in, in this moment before. Yep. I've never exactly. parented you at this age. And you are very different at three than you are at 13. Oh, it's kind of amazing. It's, oh boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I, have a, I have a friend with an eight month old who lives on my street and I'm like, you are still for a very small amount of time in the range where you put the baby down and the baby doesn't move. I just need you to know that time is ending very soon. Get ready. Mine, mine crawled by five months. Oh, <gasps> no. She hated, she hated not being able to move. Yep. Uh, and so she was extremely determined. And yeah, at five months, she started crawling. And I was like, well. Baby gates for all. <laughs> yeah. Everything gets a baby gate. It we was, will corral you and corral yeah. you some more. And yep. And now you're about to open the baby gate and let her out into the world. I'm very excited. So, Congratulations. Thank you. And happy holidays to you. Thank you so much for doing this interview. This has been delightful. Thank you so much. I, I love these. Like when, when you do the feedbacks from various folks, I really, I love listening to them and hearing the community and all that conversation. So I'm happy to contribute. And that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Thank you to Sue, to JF Hobbit, to Maria Vale, and to Lily Sona for connecting with me and sharing all of your picks and the things that you've wished for everyone. This is so fun. I love doing these. I will have links to all of the books and everything we mentioned in this episode in the show notes at smartbitchestrashybooks.com slash podcast. Now, if you're thinking to yourself... Hmm, should I join the Patreon? Should I, you know, do this? Absolutely, yes, you should. If, if what we do has value, it would be an honor to have you. But I just want to let you know that in the Discord are pictures of Lily Sona's living room and dining room, and they are exquisite. It is such a friendly, lovely place. So come on over. This week's joke is from JF Hobbit, who you heard from in this episode. This is a fantastic joke. Are you ready? How does a non-binary samurai kill people? Give up? How does a non-binary samurai kill people? They slash them. <laughs> Thank you, JF Hobbit. That completely made my day. <laughs> they slash them. <laughs> On behalf of everyone here, we wish you the very best of reading. Have a wonderful week and we will see you back here next week. Smart Podcast Trashy Books is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. You can find outstanding shows to subscribe to at frolic.media slash podcast. <laughs>